When I first began working with TFC, I was trained in uh, spontaneous art at uh, Toronto Art Therapy Institute. And one of the things that they told you never to do was interpret drawings. So I was wrestling with this issue with the uh, TFC supervisor. I began to interpret the drawings at TFC. And what, I, uh, what I've come to think about my work with, uh, with treatment foster care is that I like to see myself as uh, the voice of the child, that I'm a kind of an interpreter. When I, when I look at the pictures and when I talk about them with the uh, treatment team, I'm there as a representative uh, of the child's uh, point of view. Depends on how hard you throw, too. Yeah. Hey, look. If you hey. want it. I am getting this as a person. Oh, now that's it. You can do that. Hey, see? Hold on, I'm you getting you some spray. You go like this. I'm going. Yeah, you have to go like this. While we try to throw them in. It's just a practice village. Boy. But the detail I noted with him in our sessions is that when he's at full power, he drew himself in exactly the same way he drew his perpetrator. From this, I began to think about the perpetrator be, being an introject. In other words, him to protect himself from the pain of being perpetrated against, he took the perpetrator in whole. And so I suggested we do a work of art in which he cut the perpetrator out of him. And he began with his tool and he worked incredibly carefully and he hollowed out his whole chest and he made an X on his chest here to show that the perpetrator was close to his heart. Now as he worked, he saved all the clay in his hand. And then he did the face and he said, look, I learned how to make a throat. And I said, oh, I see. He made, he made you put his penis in your mouth. And he said, yes. Then I asked him to sculpt the perpetrator out of the, what he dug out and show him coming out. And so he sculpted this figure and painted the blood around to show the pain. The next time he came, I pointed out that in the first one, the perpetrator was still inside him. And I asked him if he could completely cut it out. So he worked the same, dug it all out, took the clay that he dug out and made the perpetrator. Then I noted that there was a huge hollow where the insides used to be. And I asked him if he could think of anything he'd like to put in there. And he said, I'd like to make a heart. And so the second piece was completed by him making the heart and inserting it into his chest and making a different expression on his face, as you can see. third piece in the series is how he imagines he'll feel when the healing process is complete. There's still quite a scar on his chest as you'll see, as you can see here. But uh, his expression is 
It actually looks more like him actually now. And he's got his cap on his head. And this is his response when I asked him what it felt like at the very moment that he was being sexually abused. And there's incredible emotion in this piece. Uh, there's a book uh, called The Silent Scream about children in violent homes. And this piece uh, sort of illustrates that uh, the teeth, the hollow eye sockets, the incredible sadness, but also the inner pain. You know, the eyes go deep inside here. So as we went through the process of attempting to cut out the perpetrator, but actually leaving him still in, to actually cutting the perpetrator out and seeing him in a separate space as the self, installing the new heart. It's the emptiness that's the danger for children like this. Picturing healing. Instilling hope by picturing healing. The venting of anger. This is a piece done by the boy about what he would like to do to the perpetrator who uh, sexually abused him over quite a period of time. And at this point, what I told him is that this process would have to happen over and over again as he found things about himself that were affected by the perpetrator. He would have to cut them out and he would have to fill in his own heart and he would have to heal a thousand times over as this healing process took place. We tried! No, you can't throw those. And you can't, I can like you know, no, you can't even use the knife by the wall. You can't because you, you can't scratch the wall, then it's hard to clean. This is even sharper! Yeah. I'll, I'm fighting a guy who has a chance to lift to one. Now I have a big one. Okay. Uh, which were done by a 15 year old girl who came to me um, with the issue of being sexually abused. Here we see around the girl eyes because she felt like everybody could see her wound. This is another piece that expresses that hole or emptiness inside. It affects both her head all through her body. One of the pieces I asked her to do is to show me that place inside she kept a part of herself hidden away that people could not get to and hurt anymore. This is her piece. Inside we can see her in her safety place but also it's a prison. The sharp things, which, because she's so creative, you can see that these are eyelashes. 
and here's the eyes watching. Here are the tears pouring out. Here's the wound in the heart. Many survivors experience this. They're hidden inside, they can't connect with people. They're caught between safety and taking the risk to have a good relationship. As one of her final pieces, I asked her to do what she would really have liked in life. And this is her piece. What's happening here is she's a child in a dangerous place, up in a tree, and her mother has come to rescue her. So even this 15-year-old girl, after violently attacking another girl, at the heart of it is her wanting to be taken care of. And this is my studio broken heart. Huh? Wow. And you get to you get to write your own broken heart story and put it in there on a slip of paper. Yeah. 